Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Ted Carr and today I'm going to be reviewing the nine questions that you should ask somebody before you start dating them. And I found these questions here on slism.com and the title of this article is nine questions you absolutely must ask any guy on a date to make sure you are dating the right one and not wasting time. Sounds like a helpful article. I'm going to go into this right now and review each question one by one and let you know if you should ask it or not. And I haven't reviewed this list yet, so this should be interesting for both of us here. First question is, what are your plans for the future? That's a good question. I like that question. What are your plans for the future? I think if someone doesn't have any plans for the future, then they're not really knowing where they're going. And it's easy to get caught up in the little things. And I think it's important to keep the big picture in mind. But if you don't have the big picture in mind, then it's easy to get caught up in the little things. So think big, think long term, and uh, keep the big picture in mind. And if the person isn't sure what their plans are for the future, instead of just disregarding them, thinking like, oh, this person's just a drifter, I can't date them, I'm going to be wasting my time, maybe you can help them create a plan for the future, create a vision for the future. And you can do that by just asking them, what do they really like to do? And incorporate that into the future. And what do they not like to do? When you know what someone doesn't like to do, you can find the opposite of what they do like to do and incorporate that into the future. So if someone doesn't have a plan for the future, then just maybe help them create one. And you can create one together. You can each create a plan for your future and see if they coincide. And if, if they merge, then um, awesome. Then you probably have a long-term trajectory with that person. And people's lives change drastically once they have a plan, a uh, set target to go for. So great question. What are your plans for the future? Second question, what is one of your favorite memories ever? That's a good question. When you're, what's one of your favorite memories ever? I like to ask the question, what's one of your earliest memories ever? What's the earliest memory you can think of? And more specifically, what's the earliest memory you have with your mom? What's the earliest memory you have with your dad? Those are two really deep questions that most people don't ask. These, this question is probably not going to be expected when you ask it. The person may have never even been asked this question before, so they have to really think for the first time. So. It's not really an icebreaker of a question, but it's definitely a deep question that they're not going to be expecting, so it'll set you apart if you ask it. Uh, and this is the type of question you ask if you actually care about somebody. If you're really superficial, you're just meeting someone for the first time, you don't really care too much about them emotionally, or you're not really interested in them, you would, probably wouldn't ask this question. It's definitely a good one to ask if you want to get to know the person a bit more. And if someone's asking you this, then know that they genuinely care about you. Third question is, what is your main life goal? Main life goal, that's a big question. And I think if you don't have one single main goal, that's totally okay. It's all right to have you know, some variety in your goals. You don't need to have like the biggest goal. You can have like the biggest goals. So yeah, see what the person's main life goal is. Maybe their main life goal is to start a very successful company. Maybe their main life goal is to just raise a beautiful family and die at the age of 100. Maybe their life goal is to replant paradise and have like, you know, a whole island full of fruit trees or something. This is an interesting question to see what the person really prioritizes in life. And if they don't have a main life goal, man, that's not so much a red flag, but it's just like something that, that needs to be addressed, I think. I think it's important to have at least a few goals in mind and you can pick which one you want to make your main goal, or you don't have to at all, but just have some goals in mind. You got to know where you want to go in life. And it's going to be so much easier to get there and you won't get caught up in the small things when you have a big goal, when you have the big picture in mind. So, great question. What is your main life goal? Fourth question. Do you like to read books? I wouldn't really ask this question. I think it's kind of irrelevant in 2017 going into 2018, almost 2020 now. Books are kind of a thing of the past, dare I say. It's awesome to read. I've gotten so much from reading books for sure, but audiobooks are the future, man, for sure. So, if you don't like to, do you like to read books? Maybe say like, what are some of your favorite books? Because the question, do you like to read books, is a yes or no question. You don't want to ask yes or no questions when you're dating someone, or when you're on the first date or whatever. When you say like, do you like to read books, the, question, the answer could be like, yes or no. It's kind of like this awkward silence there. So, instead of asking, do you like to read books, you'd be like, hey, what are some of your favorite books? Or, what book genres do you like? That's a good one. What book genres do you like? What genres of books do you like? But a great question is what are some of your favorite audiobooks? Just assume that they listen to audiobooks. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, man, nowadays audiobooks, man, they're just so much easier to consume. 
You can, you can consume them either on like 1.5 times speed or 2 times speed or just regular speed and just go for a nice walk or go for a run or just like lay down and, and just absorb it. I think humans, we, um, we can learn a lot just through our auditory senses, our ears, just by listening. So great question, but I'd modify it. You don't want to ask yes or no questions. Number five, what is your bucket list item? I think a better question would be like, what is one of your bucket list items, assuming that they have more than one? This question assumes that they have just one bucket list item. But yeah, that's, that's a fun one. That, that question will let you know like how this person wants to have fun or how they want to you know, experience an, an adventure or something or what's something that they haven't done before. That's a, it's a great way of finding out what they haven't done before. And if their bucket list item is to get a tattoo, you could be like, oh, well, actually I got this one right here. It's not that bad. It's pretty cool. We can go do it next weekend if you want. So once you know what their bucket list item is, maybe you can like surprise them on like the third or fourth or fifth date and go knock one of those things off. You're like, hey, I actually scheduled like a skydiving session or something. So that one's cool. Number six, have you ever done anything spontaneous? I'd skip that question or ask something better, like what's the most spontaneous, exciting thing you've ever done? Because have you ever done anything spontaneous is like asking a yes or no question again. The answer to this could be yes or no. And obviously someone's done something spontaneous. What kind of question is that? We all do spontaneous things. Yeah, maybe like what's the most exciting, spontaneous thing you've ever done? And they might say, run around naked or something at the park. I don't know, what's that called? Streaking. N this question's great, man. Question seven, I like this question. This question coming up lets you know if this person has any real self-confidence or not. The question is, what is your biggest strength? I think it's easy to talk about our weaknesses and people you know, they're more likely to roast themselves rather than bring themselves up and show some self-love. But talking about your strengths is, is a real sign that you have some confidence and that you're self-aware. Self-awareness is key. So what is your biggest strength? That's a good one, man. And I think before you ask this question, maybe you want to get to know them a bit more and, and find some things that you like about them in case they say, oh, I don't have any strengths. Then you can immediately bring it up and say, actually, no, I see you're quite good at organizing, or you're actually, you're actually a very good listener. That's definitely a strength. And they would be like, yeah, that's true. I am a good organizer. I am, I am a good listener. So that's a question you probably want to ask once you know them a bit more. If you already know that they're running their own business or something, maybe you want to ask like, oh, what's, what's your favorite thing about that business? Or, or what's your biggest, what's you personally, what's your biggest strength running that business? And they might say like, oh, I'm good at like managing people or something. But that's definitely a good question to find out what their strength, what their strength is, because then you can help them double down on it. When people double down on their strengths, man, they get so much further ahead. They feel so much more joy in life because they're just doing what they're good at. When you do what you're good at, you're typically doing what you love as well. So that's a great, good energy question. What's your biggest strength? And if they can't, they don't know what it is. Help them find it. I'm sure you are already looking for things that you like about this person. So use those things as their strengths. Question eight. This is a big one, man. I, I've been asked this question before and I don't really like it. I don't know why, but what is your biggest or what is your greatest achievement in life so far? Greatest achievement in life so far. I guess the reason I don't like it is because like compared to what I'm going to achieve, everything I've done so far is like, meh, it's like whatever. Damn, if I was to ask, if someone asked me this question right now, Ted, what's your greatest achievement in life so far? I don't know, man. Like, do I pick like the hardest thing I've ever done? Greatest achievement in life so far. I think I'd say like I just resort to I default to saying like doing Iron Man back in when I was like 20 or 21 years old or something. I did Iron Man. Yeah, either that or doing like 21 or 22 days on coconut water. That was pretty cool as well. Just drinking coconut water for those three weeks. Greatest achievement? Yeah, I mean Iron Man was tough, man. Iron Man was really tough. So sure, but like I want to achieve so much more, man. I want to achieve so much more. Uh, this video is not going to go into what I want to achieve, but compared to what I'm wanting to achieve, what I'm going to achieve, I don't think I've really skimmed even the surface just yet. Wait till I'm, ask me again in 10 years when I'm 37. But yeah, uh, should you ask that question? What's your greatest achievement in life so far? It kind of puts the person on the spot. It kind of puts the person on the spot because like, what if they haven't achieved that much or what if they feel the same way I felt? It, it's kind of like a flat answer. It's like, eh, I don't really know, sorry. And you're not gonna be able to help back them up because hey, you don't know. You don't, you don't know me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Or. And the same, same question, it's like the sub question here is like, what is something you're really proud of? I guess maybe you could ask, instead of asking that question, you could ask like, what are some of your core values? That's a cool question. Because some, something that someone's like, an achievement I think is establishing core values. That's an achievement, establishing your core values. And something you're proud of is sticking to your core values, right? 
So maybe instead of asking these two questions, you could say, hey, what, so what are some of your core values? And they could say like honesty, uh, health, positive moods, generosity, inner peace, I don't know, like things like that. That'd be a better question, I think. What are some of your core values? Last question, the ninth question. What is your happy place? Ah, that's cool, I like that question. What's your paradise away from reality? What's your happy place? Yeah, that's a cool question. You could, you could ask, it's, it's kind of like a, kind of like a weird word, happy place. You might say, um, what's your favorite place on planet Earth? Or where do you love to go on vacation? Or what's been your favorite place to travel to or something? Or if you could go anywhere for a week, where would you go? Or if you could go for a walk anywhere, where would you want to go for a walk? Something like that, maybe. Yeah, where's your happy place? Decent. For me, it's like the, the Monday Forest I have here in Coquitlam, and also like my cabin as well in the Okanagan. Those two places, I've only got good vibes there. So yeah, the forest and then my cabin on the lake, for me personally. Anyways, guys, those are the nine questions. I'll post the link for this article down below. This isn't an endorsement for Slism or whatever. I don't even know what the hell Slism is, but uh, I just figured I'd make a top nine video here for you guys and hope you got something from this. Any questions, comments, concerns about anything whatsoever, post them in the comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Oh, and before I go, before I go, before I go, before I go, whew, I almost missed this. This yoga wheel, I mean, I'm not endorsed by this yoga wheel either, but this thing is insane, man. That's the clock, it goes every hour. Yoga wheels are nuts. If you've never used a yoga wheel before, I highly recommend using them. I'm not gonna use one on camera right now because I haven't set the space or whatever, but they're legit, they're legit. Okay, screw it, I'm just gonna do it anyway. You just put it behind your back, you can't see this, this is like the worst, world's worst demo, but basically put it behind your back, and you, oh my God, it feels so good.